Yo, what's up people? Hope you're well. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a magnifying lens transition, just like you see in your favorite video documentaries. These are complex looking and very tactile transitions, when in reality, they are super simple. And make sure you stay to the end of the video where I reveal the source that makes the transition 10 times better. As always, if you want free editing assets and to join a community full of like-minded editors, you can check out my Discord linked in the pinned comment. As we always do, we're going to start off by creating a new composition. We're going to call the composition name main, and we're going to make the width 1920 by 1080. Then the duration can be seven seconds long. You can change any of these. It doesn't really matter. Do whatever you want. And if you want to follow along with me and get access to any of my project files and title cards, or just simply support me, you can become a Patreon. It will be linked in the description and the pinned comment. Okay, so first things first, as we always do, we're going to come over to the project window, right click and make two new folders. We're going to call one comps and the other one assets. You don't have to do this, but this is just really, you know, it's important organization. And I think I really upped my game when I started doing this. So I think you should too. Okay, so once you dragged in all of your assets, you just put them all in the assets folder and we're just going to put them in order in like magnifying lens order. So like this, I'm just going to call this one Snowfall, then this one is Snowflake, then this one's going to be Microscope. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to scale them and basically just alter them to get something we like. So I'm going to press S on the keyboard to bring up the scale and scale these down and then come to where I want this clip to start. So move over here, I'm going to move that one like over there, so it's like one second each. Okay, with the snowflake one, I'm just going to increase the scale, drag it along as far as I can, and make sure you keep the clip length all the way underneath. So you see here, go, all of them go underneath the end of the comp. This is because you see you need to overlay for the, for the transition. It will make sense in a little bit. Next, we're going to come up to the shape tool, click and hold and go to the eclipse tool. I'm going to turn the stroke off. And then we're just going to make a black fill. And what we're going to do is make a circle that fills the entire area. So I'm just going to do this like that. Then I'm going to right click it, transform, send to the anchor point and come up here. We're going to come to the align tool, click this one here and then that one there. And that will center it. Okay. And then we're just going to type size with the, with the shape layer selected. We're just going to increase it until it's the size of the entire comp so like this and then we're going to name this lens and then what we're going to do is we're going to see this little crosshair here we're going to come to this tool up here which is the pan behind tool we're just going to click and move it to like roughly anywhere over here so now you'll see when we press r to rotate it will come in from like up there so now we're just going to duplicate the lens layer by pressing ctrl d and then rename it to matte and then parent the matte layer to the lens by coming to the th little squiggly parent pick whip tool, put it on the lens and then make sure it's above the layer I want it to be. And then you are simply going to drag the matte layer below the lens and then make the snowfall layer alpha matte and then hide the lens. And now when we move, and now when we move the lens, you can see there is now transparent background here so it will become a transition so if you don't see this it's probably because you haven't hidden both of these layers okay now we're going to animate it we're going to come to the lens layer press r on our keyboard animate the rotation and we're going to have it start at 68 and then come to about one second in we're going to have this go to zero and then we're going to right click we're going to uh, select the rotation right click keyframe assistant easy ease go to the graph editor and then we are just going to graph edit it like this. And then we're going to copy this zero and then come over here and then paste it here and make this one minus two. So then it has a little bit of like bounce back. So it's more realistic. I'm going to go back into the graph editor. I'm going to zoom in by holding alt and scroll wheel up. Then I'm going to select this point right here. And then I'm going to make it like a mountain. So it's like this. We're going to see what we have so far. 
So nice. It's pretty simple. I think I'm going to make it a tiny bit quicker. So I'm going to select all the keyframes, holding Alt and click on the last one and then drag it inwards. Nice. Okay, and now we are going to add a border of the lens or like the actual like lens part of it. So I'm going to come to this uh, Eclipse tool again. And then I'm going to get rid of the fill. And then we're going to come to the stroke, make it black. I'm going to hold shift and then click to make a rough size. And then we're going to come to this shape, uh, the shape layer again, right click, transform, and then center the anchor point. And then we are going to align it horizontally and then align it vers vertically to center it. And you can see there's now a tiny gap. So you can either scale it up or increase the stroke. So I'm just going to scale it up really slightly. And then I'm going to rename this one to border and then drag it above that layer. And then what we're going to do is we want it to move with the lens. So we're going to come to the pick whip tool and we're going to come to where the, the, the animation keyframes have finished. So having my playhead here, and then I'm going to parent it to the lens and you can now see it comes down, but you can see there's still a tiny bit of image you can see. So what we're going to do, we're going to slightly increase the stroke until we can't see it anymore. It's basically just about altering the scale and stroke, like managing one another to make the transition look good. And now you can see it comes down. Next, we are going to add the effect Gaussian Blur. So we're going to come up here and type Gaussian Blur in. We're going to put it onto the border layer. And we're just going to make it 75. Now, if we look here, there's still a tiny bit of image showing. So what we're going to do is just increase the, sh uh, the stroke a little bit more. And then also increase the scale. Have a look. Okay, we can't see it anymore. That's pretty good. And after doing the blur on the border, we're going to add Gaussian Blur to the image. And we're going to do a focus hunt effect. So I'm actually going to also move the keyframes for the lens just a tiny bit forward. So the transition has some time to, you know, breathe. Uh, we're going to start with 15, I think, and then click animate. So when we start to see it here, so I'll have it start about here and then I want it to finish out here. So I have it go to zero then I'm going to have it go to five and then I'm going to have it go to zero again. So I'm going to click blurriness and then right click keyframe assistant easy ease graph editor. Then I'm going to highlight this point and just drag it all the way here. So it's just a normal speed ramp graph and then two normal ones. And then you can have a, have a look it focus hunt slightly. Okay, I think I'm going to make it a little bit faster. So I'm going to hold, uh, select all the layers and then hold alt and click the last keyframe and then just drag it inwards. Let's have a look. Sweet. We're also going to do a really slight scale for the image up. Uh, so we're going to press S on our keyboard with the image selected and animate the scale. Make sure it starts around. Where's the lens? So we're going to have it start where the lens transition comes in. Then we're going to have it go all the way to the end. One keyframe before the next clip. We're going to type plus five into there. And then we are going to right click keyframe assistant easy ease graph editor. And then we're going to do a sharp L graph. So just like this. Awesome. Sweet. I think I'm going to increase the speed of the lens because right now I think it's a bit slow. So I'm going to, again going to select the keyframes and then hold alt and click and drag them in. So now with this first transition done, we're going to duplicate it onto the other other images. So what you're going to do is you're going to select the border layer and then holding shift, click the matte layer. So you select all of them, then control C and control V. Then drag this above the snowflake layer, then move the first keyframe in line with the image and then make sure you press you on your keyboard on the lens layer and move it to start about here and then you're going to come to the snowflake image layer you come to the track map and then make the make it alpha map and then you'll see it now comes down after making an alpha map we are going to come to the snowfall layer 
going to press U on our keyboard and we're just going to come to the Gaussian blur and control C and then control V it onto the snowflake layer. And we're just going to watch it through to see if it needs any altering. So I think this part is really sharp. So I'm actually going to just select the layers and drag them out a bit. And then I'm also going to increase the gap between the zero and five keyframes here to have a look how they are. Okay. Also going to turn it down to about two. So you want it to be nice and subtle. Sweet. And make sure you have repeat edge pixels on too. And then I'm also going to press S on our keyboard for, to animate the scale. And then come to the uh, second to last keyframe away from the next image. And then just simply type plus five. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then graph editor and then make it an l a sharp l graph again just like we did in the first image okay let's see what we have so far okay and then we're just going to do all of that onto the microscope layer as well this saves a huge amount of time so you don't have to repeat this and you should always copy and paste things and save time time is everything so we're going to come here select from top to bottom Control c Control v Drag it above the microscope layer, drag it along to where it starts. Then make the microscope image an alpha mat. And then we're going to watch it through. Sweet. We come to the snowflake layer, press U on our keyboard. Click on the Gaussian blur, control C and then control V it. Let's have a look. Okay, I don't even, I don't even see it. So we're also just going to move it out a little bit. Okay, I think that starts at a good time. And then we're going to change it back from two back to five again, because the Gaussian blur will have a different amount of blur, even if the number is the same, dependent on the image's resolution. So if the image's resolution is higher, the blur will have a need to have a higher amount to actually see it. So let's have a look. Sweet. And we don't actually need the rest of this, so we're going to press N on our keyboard and it will take it to the playhead. Then we're going to trim comp to work area. And then we're going to come to the microscope layer again, press S on our keyboard, animate the scale, come to the second last keyframe, type plus 5. I'm going to right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, graph editor it, and make it a sharp L graph again. Let's have a look at what we have so far. Now onto everyone's favorite part, the source. So what we're gonna do is, as usual, we're gonna create two adjustment layers. So we're gonna press Control Alt Y twice on our keyboards to create two adjustment layers. We're going to name the top one FPS and then the one below it FX. Okay, so for the FX, we're gonna start with Transform. We're going to drag it onto the FX layer. Then we're going to make it 100 uh, 100.5 and we we'll come to the position alt alt on our keyboard click and then it's going to bring up the expression window and we're going to type posterize time three and wiggle two to two comma one and then this is just going to add a camera shake if you don't want to do all this the preset for my source will be free on my patreon so you can go and download that or it'll be in the free source channel on my discord server okay after that we're going to search up the effect noise going to come to where it is so it's here under noise and grain i'm going to uncheck use color noise i'm going to make it 10 so we can start to see add nice grain you can do anywhere from 5 to 10 i like to have a bit more noise heavy so i'm going to put it on 10 and then what you're going to do next is add the effect quick chromatic aberration um, i did say there were no plugins however i deem free plugins as no plugins because free is accessible to everyone and I definitely think you should download Quick Chromatic Aberration. So I'll leave the link to that in the description. So I'm going to drag it on. It's going to say whatever. And then position. We're going to make it 2.5. So you can see. Nice, nice little RGB edges. You can do anywhere from like 1 to 2.5. I think 2 may be better for this. Yeah, I think I think 2 is better. And then we are going to next add optics compensation. 
I'm going to make the field of view 25 and then we're going to click reverse lens distortion. So now you can see there is just a nice warp. Maybe even make it, you can maybe even make it like 35. I think that may be too much. Maybe 30. I think 30 is good. I mean, ultimately you can change it to whatever you want, how you do it. That's what's fun about doing a creative job. And then finally, we're going to add sharpen. It's a great effect to use. Keep it subtle. We're going to make it 15. So it's that much clearer. And also makes the noise uh, a lot more sharper, which I think looks really good for like a nice crunchy texture. And then after that, of course, we're going to add posterize time to the FPS layer and make it anywhere from 12 to 15. I'm going to make it 15 in this case. And there you have it. You now have your magnifying lens transition. And thank you guys for watching. And also thank you for, for almost seven, almost 800 subscribers. This is crazy. By the end of the year, I'm really hoping to have a thousand subscribers, which is insane to say. I never thought I'd have a community this fast. So thank you guys. As always, if you found this video helpful, subscribe and drop a like. That really helps me with the algorithm. And if you want any tutorials, please comment them down below and suggest them. I'll, I'll note them down. Lastly, any of my socials or relevant links will be in the description. So you can check them out. Maybe follow me on, on Twitter or Instagram or something. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video. Goodbye.